Mrs. Hudson. It helps clear my head when I'm coming off an opium high. I'm sure no good will come of associating with those Orientals. Mark my word, Mr. Holmes. Whatever. Now, what's the only point you're disturbing my meditative cogitations? Oh, thank you not to use that kind of language around a lady, Mr. Holmes. Oh, honestly, sometimes I swear you're as much of a buzzkill as Watson. That's as needs maybe, but there's a fine lady at the door, and she seems to be suffering from considerable consternation. She seeks to retain your services, I shouldn't worry, Mr. Holmes. Well, you'd better send her on up, you silly bit part actress, and then we can be on with the case. Mr. Holmes, it's said about the town that you're the finest mind in all England. Indeed it is. They say you can help when the police cannot. Indeed, madame, that too is certainly true. And it's often told that you will take on the most baffling case for free. Indeed, and you, you do what? Free? Gratis? Not a sausage? Madame, do you think fiddle strings and opium just grow on trees? Anyway, I've uh, already deduced you're a lady of some considerable means. Why, Mr. Holmes, however can you tell? Firstly, because you're wearing a necklace whose value exceeds that of my home. Secondly, because your bearing is clearly that of one who has attended Madame Fionella's deportment classes. Thirdly, it is because your accent has traces of Knightsbridge, no matter how you attempt to disguise them from the common argot. And finally... Yes? Because I read the first page of the script, where it said, Dowager Duchess Whifflebottom next to your name. Incredible, Mr. Holmes. Your skills are as legendary as they say. Let me explain my predicament. It's my husband. He's been missing for days. How remarkable. And you say your husband hasn't been seen for over a week? No, and from all accounts, the Duke is a quiet man without a single vice, who liked a good read, a cold bath, and an early night. Nutter. Oh, so I guess we can rule out the flesh pots and backstreet alehouses then? No, don't be so hasty, Watson. We must leave no stone unturned, no pint undrunk, and no lady unpoked if we are to find his duke ship. Okay, that's right. Mrs. Hudson, Mrs. Hudson! Oh, whatever is all the commotion, Dr. Watson? Why, I'm not sure if you and Mr. Holmes made when you returned last night. I fair took fright. I thought you were the white chapel killer himself, so I did. You did build your part, love. Well, whatever do you mean? Never mind. Would you kindly fetch us some tea? Mr. Holmes did a lot of, uh, investigation last night, and he's doubtless in need of revitalization. Oh, what in Hades was I drinking, Watson? It's more a case of what you weren't drinking, Holmes. Anyway, I think we can safely rule out the brothels and pubs in the city. The Duke's not been seen in any of them. No, no, I'd concluded as much before we set out. Still, always worth a try, I say. Perhaps, given his noted fondness for books, we should perhaps try the British Library. Uh, actually, I was thinking, uh, we ought to go and look around the Chinese opium dens, and then we might... No! Oh, all right, all right, don't shout. Now, I just need to score a couple of pounds of heroin, and then we can... No, Sherlock, please, focus on the case, not your peccadillos for once. Well, I'm not touching his peccadillos, that's for sure. Oh, Mr. Holmes, a gentleman's just dropped off a letter addressed to you personally. He did? Excellent, Watson. This could be the break in the case we're looking for. Or hey, perhaps it's just my Amazon parcels um, got lost again. It seems awfully suspiciously convenient, if you ask me. 
I wasn't asking you. Now, what does it say? You go open it. Um, who is it from? Well, read it out, Watson. Best speaking voice, please. My, My dear, dear Mr. Mr. Holmes, once, once again, again we lock horns in our eternal intellectual battle. Oh, how I shall relish confounding and confusing you with my clever conundrums and misdirections. I shall roar with laughter as you fall afoul of my myriad of traps and numerous henchmen. The Duke is mine. And unless the Duchess pays 10,000 guineas by sunset, he will never see the light of day again. Your eternal foe, Professor James Mariotti. P.S. Love to Mrs. Hudson. Oh, great! It's that nutter again. Oh, why can't it ever be someone easier? Whatever are we to do, Holmes? Sunset is just a few hours away. Tell me, Watson, is there a from address on the back of the envelope? Great Scott, there is. However, did you know? Hello? Well, the greatest consulting weasel detective and violin player standing right over here, Watson. Yes, uh, I'll get back to you, that Holmes. Oh, don't dilly-dally, Watson. The game's afoot. Uh, Mrs. Hudson? Oh, what is it, Mr. Holmes? Fetch my elephant gun! I'm off to hunt a rat! It's a funny place to hide a duke. Yes, right under our noses all this time. 221C Baker Street. C for sewer. So simple, a child of ten could have seen through it. Uh, I'm fairly sure sewer is spelt with an S, Holmes. Really? Oh, well, I better double check that uh, later. <gasps> On the house, Watson, look, up ahead, it's the Duke. Oh, oh, Mr. Holmes, oh, we arrived far too late. With you in the case already, he had no further use for me. Uh, I think he's dead. Uh, I can't be sure, though. The fiend that life means so little to him quite gets my dander up. Watson, the tea arriving five minutes too late gets your dander up. Who oh, is the principal of the thing, Holmes. Anyway, I'm damned if I can work out how the Duke died. There's not a belly mark on him. Let me take a closer look, Watson. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, don't you have much use, old boy. I got my doctorate at the very best medical school in the land, and I'm totally flummoxed. Uh, Brighton Polytechnic, wasn't it? Uh, yes, quite, quite. But they have a spiffing social program. Ah, I knew it. The professor has employed the deadly techniques he learned from the Mavrang tribe. The death of sourness. But Holmes, that's impossible. Sourness never killed anyone. To the contrary, my dear Watson. He was killed by the insertion of a large lemon up his bum. You don't mean... Yes. Lemon entry, my dear Watson. Oh, God. Is it really too late to recast my part? I, I think I might have a chance for a walk on the East Enders rather than this rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, Watson. Ha ha, Professor! Your stationery led me right to your lair! Whom would have ever suspected a rat like him would be found in a sewer like this? Hey, that's rarest. Look, the rent was cheap in these troubled times. Everyone has to economize, even super criminals! Ha <laughs> ha, clearly crime doesn't pay. Oi, Watson, I'll handle the wisecracks. You just focus on making me look good. So, Mariate, you never intended to let the Duke live, did you? How clever of you to deduce that Sherlock. You are, of course, quite correct. I've been waiting to try out that method of execution for months. I'll see you swing a Tyburn for this, Professor. Why ever would that happen? You've no proof. For all you know, the Duke stuffed himself full of citrusy death simply to get away from that wife of his. Uh, no, actually, because one, um, those crates of lemons, um, I venture that an exact match for the murder fruit. 
And two, I've got this here signed letter where you threatened to kill the Duke. Circumstantial at best, Holmes. I'll be free in a matter of days. <laughs> Curses, Holmes, he has you there. Inspector Lestrade will never be able to make this case stick. <laughs> Admit it, Sherlock. I've always been the smarter of the two of us. You're outclassed and outmatched. Once again, I'm above the law and beyond your outmoded concepts of justice. Maybe, but, um... Oh, one more thing, James. What's that? Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> Whatever made you think I was going to faff about with a trial? Napoleon of crime, my ass. He wasn't even the Josephine of shoplifting. Right then, Watson, home for tea and victory biscuits. You, you, you were shot him, Sherlock. Oh, yes, a leaden entry wound, my dear Watson. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, my stars, that's almost as bad as the fruit one. Let's get out of here. And so, that is the end of the mysterious case of the disappearing Duke. I must say, Holmes, at your honor, my genius, that's quite natural, Watson. No, what I was going to say was that you can't believe I got the Duchess to double our fee. I am a silver-tongued weasel with all the ladies, don't you know? Quite, uh, no, no. I can't believe you got away with shooting Moriarty. Look, I told Lestrade it was a giant moth from the Orient, and he believed every word. Thankfully, the man's a complete idiot. Plus, since I probably cut the crime rate in the East End by about 50%, I'd say, all in all, a successful conclusion. Well, aside from the Duke, and you can't just go around shooting criminals, Holmes. It's just not cricket. I'm actually more than a rugby man, Watson, not to tell the truth. Honestly, Holmes, you really are the most infuriating and sufferable... What? Oh, Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, there's several red-haired gentlemen at the door to see you. Something about a missing caseload of artificial knees. Ha! Just what I needed to dispel this mood. The mysterious case of the red-headed knees. Mrs. Hudson, send them up in a moment. And Watson, yes, Holmes? Could you pop out and buy me another box of bullets? <laughs> the one I've got here appears to be all empty. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh no!